Yes, so it's Saturday evening, and uh, by the grace of God, I sit here this evening with uh, with a sober and clean mind and heart, and and a clear conscience. Sit here with um, thirty other people that are having a good praise and worship session at the moment, you know, and sit here thinking about. How lucky we all are to have gotten out of and off the streets thinking of the people that is going to their first recovery meeting this evening, their first day sober. And then obviously thinking of those that is going to their their last recovery meeting or what may seem to be their, their last day sober. And... Uh, you know, we, we all sit here with, with a new choice. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see that uh, our regulars are, are popping up here. And um, so I sit here this evening with a, with a choice. You know, I, I, I started off using and, and doing drugs and uh, getting involved with a lot of wrong things. And some of it was fun to start out with. Used a lot of different substances. Got addicted to some. Still addicted to some like cigarettes, but that doesn't make my life unmanageable. It doesn't cause me to steal from my family. It doesn't cause me to do credit card fraud or housebreaking. It doesn't take me to the streets. Sure, it's not bad. It's sure, it's not uh, good for my health. But neither is the the Royco. Uh, you know what I mean? That most of us used to cook with nowadays. So, um, very grateful to be on a Saturday evening. You know, at. Uh, at the rail farm, the, the, the organization that has been sort of um, over the years, uh, a, a program that, that, that has evolved with the, with the way addiction has, has, has taken a turn and, in, and evolved, still um, run on straight and hardcore spiritual principles and living principles that, um, that most households lack today, addicts or not. And um, so, you know, Saturday night, I'm I'm on the on the farm here, doing my recovery because that's what I have to put first, at all times in every decision that I make. So that the things I love the most don't have to come last. So very blessed and grateful to be here. You know there isn't much else that has worked for me. I've been to many rehabs, many programs, um, been in and out of our. Uh, our correctional facilities here in, in, in Cape Town, Paul's More Goodwood Prison, been to one or two psych wards, been in hospital for all kinds of uh, different organ problems, woke up a couple of mornings feeling like there was somebody else in, in my body, and uh, <coughs> nothing else could make me stop using drugs. Besides my my own choice to stop, but my choice today is either to do this program and follow it, or to go on to the bitter ends as best I can, and ultimately pick up. Because that's what will happen to me without a program. So, good evening, everybody. I'm Kurt. I'm a recovering <clears throat> addict, alcoholic, whatever makes you high. I'm recovering from that. <clears throat> I never really done too many uh, hallucinogenics because uh, once when I was 14, I, I took uh, malpita. It's very similar to mushrooms and moonflowers and that kind of stuff. And I landed up in hospital chasing animals around and woke up with a nappy on. And uh, the doctors told my parents, if I survive, I'll be a vegetable forever. And that was 20 years ago. So, uh, 
yeah, you know, tonight I get to count my blessings. And some say that it's miserable weather. But it's all dependent on how we look at things, you know. Uh, last year, this time, our, our rivers were empty. We're very blessed to have water. It's not, uh, not drought. It's raining. It's a little bit windy. Definitely here with a with a good bunch of guys and today was phone calls day there was there was there was um, one or two pre-arranged visits and meetings and um, And You know, I, I must say with a with a group of guys that 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 we got here and according to the world statistics on on addiction and 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 how many people recover that go into into recovery um, I can definitely say over the last two years, we, our statistics is, um, of the guys staying sober, um, usually the, the World Health Organization says that 1% of people that go into recovery, good evening again everybody, there's quite a few names that, that pop up and then disappear, people come in on and offline, and, uh, yeah, the, the World Health Organization says that 1% of people that go into recovery today, only 1% will be sober next year this time. <coughs> so we're proving them wrong. Um, some people say that miracles don't happen anymore. But uh, I can tell you that we see them every day over here on the farm. With it, with it being Saturday night, you know, if, if I think about my life a couple of Saturdays ago, it's a Just For Today program that I, that I live for, for the rest of my life, you know. The Lord's Prayer says, says clearly that, uh, that we live just for today, my daily bread. And, um, and the way we do our recovery is just in the terms of recovery, but it's, but it's spiritual principles that we, that we live by. So uh, we definitely, definitely blessed here on the farm. Mr. Wall is on his on his travels. You know, this is one part of part of the the, the difference that that uh, that Mr. Wall has founded and made. You know, I was I was going through the list of the last ten years of people that that are still sober, and um, you know maybe maybe we should phone the world health organization and tell them that the statistics have changed a little bit from one percent of people because uh yeah we get we stay in contact with our guys a lot of them doing very well richie and Joni made a turn here this evening very very awesome to see them um and that's what's happening so you know i think the the buzzword for for saturday evening like now in retrospect, if I look back on even up to 20 years ago, like I explained to you, um, I'm, I'm recovering from just about anything that you can get high from. Obviously, my, my primary sort of drug of choice or, or drug of no choice that I lost my choice against was, was heroin. It, it took me and, and, and a lot of close loved ones down a path of complete destruction. Um, I've been affiliated with, with Mr. Wall and Rail since 2007, acquainted with Mr. Wall um, prior 2005, and, uh, and it's, it's been a journey, you know. There was, there was, there was times that, that I, was, I was five days sober when I wished I was five years sober, and Mr. Wall would always explain to me that, that I shouldn't do myself in and miss out on the journey. It's been a, a wonderful, wonderful experience of, of coming from a place, getting here with two different shoes on, clothes that is too small for me, and um, complete, complete destruction and, 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 and utter despair, loneliness, and, and all of that. Here we, we operate as a family, and um, the only time that we look down on people is when we're helping them up. And uh, our, our code that we live by here is is love and tolerance. And I say in the meetings all the all the time. I say in the meetings all the all the time that I will continue repeating myself. 
and giving grace to to the guys that make mistakes here. Yeah, we got no serious shit problems that uh, that 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 we have to deal with. We 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 get people that have been through serious shit, but we've we've got no serious chaos and and things. lovely bunch of guys that have that have got got the same illness as me. People repeated themselves to me for 13 years before I listened. So why can't I repeat myself? To them because the penny might just drop and it's a life that we could save and uh yeah so so the guys are busy with their praise and worship evening because it all goes on uh once we you know straighten out spiritually and focus on our recovery the rest falls into place and 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 that is that is the mindset that is that has been passed on to me if um you know it's 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 easy that this this isn't a program of thought or a program of, of writing, or a program of thinking. It's a program of action. So we all know the answers, love thy neighbor, forgive and forget, let go and let God, and this too shall pass, and all of that. But uh, try saying that serenity prayer that's behind me. I don't know if it's backwards. Is it backwards, Tank? Uh, it's normal, but with your screen, it's backwards. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> But I say it so many times in a day that I can even say it backwards. Um, and, you know, try try saying that serenity prayer and, and processing things inside when somebody has wronged you or when things haven't gone your way. So this is a, is a program of, of, of complete abstinence from all substances. And, um, and, and once the drugs are done and we work the program, we get our choice back. So today my choice is to work the program which means no to drugs. It's not just a simple yes or no to drugs anymore. It's a don't work my program, and yes, I will definitely do drugs again if I don't work my program. Or no to drugs by working my program, which is which is not for... Recovery isn't for wussies. It's, um, you know, I was explaining to somebody today that uh, if you go through something or you or you have a, have a bit of an issue, then... And you're not a substance abuser. It takes you a bit of time, you know. It takes you a week or so to, depending on the, on the, on the, on the problem, or the nature thereof, to sort of process it and and deal with it and and uh, and keep on keep on having uh, doing what you need to do outwardly and things like that. No matter how you're feeling, and the process of recovery. That can't take place in 28 days because you've got a lifetime's worth of shit that you you need to sort through, feel, deal with, and um, accept and make right. You know, um, there's there's obviously different parts of the program that 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 we believe has been watered down. Richie was telling me today that 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 people go to recovery meetings outside, and once it hits half past eight, they want to stand up and leave. But when the drugs were still going at Hoppus 8, who was leaving then? So, um, awesome to see our friends that are that are watching you this evening. And uh, always good to, to have you. Tank went on a date last night. Tank went on a date last night. And... Uh, that was after the sun went down and then he came back and he was red and looked like he was tanned a bit, even though the sun was down. And um, you know what, what really intrigued me was, was how interested he was in, in how other people live. Because for the last, I don't know how many years, you know, you, you get the, the, the sort of, not nice part of drugs, but the part of, 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 of the drugging lifestyle and the jawling lifestyle that you enjoy. And then you get the very destructive part of it. And it was amazing for Tank to come home yesterday evening and, um, and explain what, 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 what other people talk about and, and, and a conversation that wasn't just either revolving around addiction and, and, and addiction recovery and, and, um, you know, hearing and feeling and listening to to other people's interests, and uh, it's a it's a well deserved date. Tank has worked really really hard in his recovery. 
the only oak I know that uh, that got everything in recovery and lost it again without picking up drugs. <laughs> That's a cuck one. But, uh, you know, if he didn't go through these certain things and he wasn't continuously taught acceptance that he cannot have what he wants, when he wants it, how he wants it, then uh, he wouldn't have been the strong human being that he is today. So, um, so Tank comes through the school of hard knocks here. There isn't another way to do recovery. You know, all the different curveballs that life throws at you, we, we need to gear the people up for that. Because smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. And, um, you know, we, we are willing to, to go through any struggles with, 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 with any person that doesn't have an attitude. Because if you think of it at the, in, the, in the way, you know, addiction takes you to a place where it's almost like you've got 100 AK-47s pointed at you and you don't have a way out and you need to surrender. But then you come into recovery and instead of surrendering and like putting your hands up, is uh, you you throw your gun down with an attitude and hold your flag up like okay like yeah I'm gonna do this and uh, yes the same tank that sold Mr Wall's shoes good evening Mr Wall it's your message that uh, and you not giving up on me that's why I'm sitting here by God's grace this evening sober and alive and not with a needle in my arm or in a hospital with a nappy on and life support and um, also given me my my pride for life back you know it, it it becomes difficult for um for a person in recovery to find their place in society and that is that is why i i've learned the removing the stigma of 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 alcoholism and addiction over here um by my store because it's very difficult to fit in because you, yeah, I've used AK-47 once and not the gun, but uh, that was a long time ago. I know that I don't have lazy swimmers because uh, I've got an eight-month-old daughter. I'm getting married on the 28th of November in a couple of days. Getting married to a person that I put through hell after a relapse that I had and... Um, And this can't be such a bad program or, or, or place that some of the people leave you and say it is. Because those very people are sober. And, um, you know, we, our biggest struggle is the, is the lack of, of recovery stimulation outside. The lack of, of recovering addicts and, and, and families standing together because of, of the sort of pride and and um and the stigma attached to it that's why we we big on our, our rail orange fridays that is a free campaign <clears throat> um that encourages people to put up an orange ribbon and and like i said in in remembrance of of the people that were lost along the way in 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 the last 20 30 40 years to um to addiction you know um, I, I, I heard a, a guy telling a, a recovery story the other day where his sponsor was, was telling him that uh, if he's going to be part of, of recovery, he needs to get himself a nice black suit. Um, because if he's going to be part of the, the, the addiction world or the addiction recovery world, then he's going to need that suit to, to go to a lot of funerals. And that's why I say we sit here, I sit here an arm's length away from a needle, a lolly, a drink. And purely by God's grace, purely by somebody repeating to me the same things that I sit here and repeat to, to everybody else. In the hope that, that they can get the message and, and possibly repeat it to somebody else in the same situation. And um, he was telling his recovery story and his sponsor told him that... Uh, he must get him a nice black suit. 
Because firstly, if if he's going to be in the addiction recovery world, he's possibly going to go to a lot of funerals. And secondly, if he drinks or drugs again, he's at least going to have something nice to wear to his own funeral. And that is the seriousness of addiction. And that is why we have to keep on doing what we need to do and putting our recovery first every single day, all the time. And uh, so... You know, even with Mr. All being on the road on, 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 on his mission where where the where he's he's done his part in the in the addiction recovery world, I can honestly say that I've never been to another facility or met another human being that has out of his own pocket sponsored and, and given so many addicts and alcoholics the, the chance at a new life. Um like I said, you know, out of the, out of the basically just about thirty people on the, on the farm. On the on the recovery center farm, um, there's at at this point as we as we stand, there's about five, six, that is is employed through Mr. All people that were unemployed, people that that were unemployable people that had no work ethic because if i be honest with you a couple of years ago you know i i've, I've always worked in the hospitality industry eventually lost the passion for it and um it became i became good at it because that's what got me my drugs and there's lots of skills here lots of ethic lots of lots of discipline that is that is taught and um and on the lighter side of things, lots of different characters, many, many different characters. We, we, we range from, from ages 18 right through to, to almost 70 and um, all different sort of backgrounds and, and, and grown up from all different places. And uh, we've had our meetings with them today. They've had their phone calls with their families and, and the 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 drug pandemic is is in turmoil the percentage of people that that we have over here is is half a street in any suburb in in south africa <coughs> and that's the sad part about it you know there's there's Luckily, people that are that are fly by night is 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 uh, that have opened recovery centres and and ran for a while and and we have guys that have been to those centres over here. Um, I've been to a lot of them, and and eventually because of 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 them being found out and 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 how they play with people's families and lives and and the the addict themselves they are being closed down. So we run a tight ship over here. Uh, time for jokes, time for recovery, and um, and time to have fun. You know, like I said, with the, with the silly season coming up now, um, for, for any person in, in recovery, it's a bad time of the year, difficult time of the year. And I know myself, before I was serious enough about my recovery and used to put it first all the, and didn't used to put it first all the time like I do now, I know for me to make it through, through December, I usually end up in hospital probably by about the middle of January, if not um, locked up. If not, uh, if, if, I, if I had like a really good or, or, or bad run, then I'd end up in, in Rio by April. But, uh, you know, some people have their own thoughts and comments about uh, addiction being a choice. But I know that I needed to be sick in some kind of sense for the, for the destruction and harm that I was causing. Sometimes very funny stories. Very, very funny stories. And uh, I can I can I can give you a quick little rundown about my story. Is uh, yeah, probably by about standard two, 
I was, I don't know if I just, if I was just a shit magnet or if I just had that face that uh, attracted trouble all the time, but I found myself, or maybe I put myself in, in, in trouble most of the time. Um, yeah, by, by standard two, I was, uh, I was doing, doing drugs and substances before I even knew that the word drugs existed. You know, you'd always get warned about the, the uncles that stand by the fence tank with the, with the sweets. But fuck it, nobody ever gave me free drugs, eh? <laughs> you, would, uh, you would hear about the people's drinks that get spiked. You would hear about the people's drinks that get spiked. And fuck it, sorry, I mean, damn it. There was times that I would scheme like, yes, it's gone. My drink gets spiked, like, just so that I can also have a bit of a free ride. And, um, yeah, Lee J, the, the crayons, I was just, maybe I was just naughty and rebellious. Um, always obviously had, had parents trying to, trying to teach me and show me the right way. But I remember, like Mr. Hall reminds me all the time as well, is that my first run-ins with the law was when... My first memory of it was when I was four years old and I wanted crayons at the spur. And uh, I got home and I pulled the crayons out of my pocket. And my dad was pissed off, eh? Yo! I tell you, he wanted to take me back to the spur to take the crayons back. It was quite nice crayons, though. And uh, I wanted to do my own thing, obviously. I wasn't interested in in taking the crowns back. I just wanted to color in and do my own thing. <coughs> and um, anyways, yeah, I, I think, you know, today I realize the possibility of, of, of maybe low self-esteem or, or, or tension-seeking or, or whatever, but I would just strange things, yeah. Um, and my, my, my parents couldn't understand where it came from. So probably around about by standard two, three, um, yeah, I was smoking cigarettes by that time already. Um, not because because my first couple of cigarettes gave me a corpse pin or whatever, but 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 people would notice the the naughty people, and maybe it didn't matter what attention I was getting, just as long as I was getting attention. And uh, I don't like I don't like that much attention today anymore. Okay, pizza, hardcore. Pizza, Mr. Shooter, one slice. Lekker. All right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so, standard two or three, ach, we started using pens and not pencils anymore, and I discovered that uh, that when you make a mistake, you use Tipex, and the Tipex smelled kind of nice, and when the Tipex got dry, you needed Tipex thinners, and the Tipex thinners smelled even better than the Tipex. So I quit a bit of Tipex thinners on my tire, and uh, and I smelted, and it made me high. And then eventually, you know, it started trying all different kinds of things and, 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 and stuff like that. Being completely unaware about drugs and, and whatnot, um, alcohol was obviously socially acceptable by standard four. Um, I started experimenting with, with vodka and Fanta grape and Coke and hooch and all kinds of things. Um, yeah, still being very, very naughty and rebellious at the time, I, I then, you know, thought it was, we had this like hideout at the, at the Bodezig, uh, soccer club, and, uh, we used to like smoke cigarettes there, and, and, uh, we would even put dry grass in a pipe, like, and, and smoke, and just catch on this, all this weird nonsense, and, uh, it was pretty fun at the time. Yes, definitely, Linda. A bit of people pleasing, maybe a bit of low self esteem, wanting to be noticed. And, um, no, Derek, I don't know about the X factor in, 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 in addicts. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, as, as things progressed, I was passing at school, didn't see a problem, and things like that. Started going to under 18 matinees and things like that, would, would, would get completely pissed. And uh, and vomit and and uh, just cause mayhem and and trouble 
and and very fun at the time though not not thinking that it's going to lead up to me you know overdosing on hallucinogenics and chasing animals around hospitals or 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 or, or sort of um having burst ulcers and and landing up in hospitals or or later on going to going on to housebreaking doing credit card fraud stealing and and just uh causing shit you know so so to me life was progressing in the in the in the right direction and and uh yeah no michelle i just done more tip extenders to get rid of the headache so it like just didn't stop and uh i'm sure that people couldn't understand like why i, I always had such a lot of tip extenders and then i had nothing the next day but um yeah, you know that that was that was mid nineties where 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 the drugs weren't flowing as hectic as what they are now, where there were still certain areas and places where where it was subtle and it wasn't almost normal, and um, so so anyways, yeah, no life went on by standard five. Yo, no, the school holidays are standard four. Like I said, we had this hideout at the soccer club. We used to bunk school over there, and um, and smoke cigarettes and 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 drink and 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 all of that. So the one day we were breaking windows there, and we we thought it was hilarious, and we didn't know that there was somebody in the in the main clubhouse, and um, and yeah, this 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 caretaker came running around the side, and I was standing with a half a brick in my hand looking at him and there was just about no more windows left to break and uh so we ran away and we thought that that we had gotten away with it and ach, a couple of weeks later we're still going to our hideout and 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 all of that and obviously we were recognized and um what 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 happened then was ended up getting community service which which actually ended up a good thing and a bad thing um yeah so we you know the next two school holidays we we worked with a caretaker at the at the soccer field um part of it was was a joke at the time my i know i remember my my dad was devastated by my my behavior um pardon and in the in the interim you know um obviously unaware just like the parents are unaware of what goes on at the trans parties today um parents at that time were unaware what was happening at the under 18 sort of parties and things like that people smoking weed and getting drunk and and doing all kinds of things and um and yeah just sort of slowly but surely like getting out of control and you know there was there was nothing that could instill f enough fear in me to to not do these things um you know like like i said maybe there was something in me that it didn't matter what attention i was getting as long as i was getting attention uh maybe low self-esteem that i've come to the conclusion maybe it was that now that i'm in recovery you know and we we take inventory and we and we sort of go through our lives and 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 we see what what we as as human beings were were lacking in ourselves or 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 where we didn't listen or or which which life skills we didn't practice and and get good at and um so went on to on to standard five um yeah that was just you know the the last year of sort of primary school that's when the when the dacha smoking started and 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 drinking more um yeah by by standard six it was it was normal to to sort of bunk school quite often and I, and i didn't see the problem in it because i was passing my terms i was doing what i needed to do and and there were even times when i had had holiday jobs and 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 casual jobs on the on the weekends and things like that so i was outwardly i was doing everything what what every other kid was doing but um maybe a little bit more and and uh you know even there's there's even times when i go back into certain behaviors where where 
I liked the attention. I wanted to be the bell of the ball all the time. And there's even times where I was very, very horrible to, to other people that I'm not proud about. And, um, you know, at that stage of my life, I hadn't had feelings yet. I hadn't been humbled by anything. Uh, I, I always tell the, tell the guys that, um, that I was too arrogant to envy anybody. I don't know if that will make sense to anybody. But uh, I say so because I overlooked everything. And, and in, in my mind at that time, I was invincible. Um, yeah, geez, when I, when I look at the, at, the, at the grade eights or standard sixes today, and I think to myself of, of, of who I thought I was at that time in my life is, is, is actually, I don't know if it's a joke or if it's delusion or, <clears throat> or you know, I, I, I don't wish that upon any parent. And, and, uh, and that's why we say that, that, that it should be a normal thing in today's world that, that people test their kids. So, you know, there was fun times and catching on nonsense and we used to lie to our parents, say that I'm sleeping over here by my friend, my friend is sleeping over by me and we used to go walk around the whole night catching on nonsense and, and things like that. And um, I think probably about by my, my 13th birthday, um, I had, like I said to you, when I got to high school, it, it became normal to bunk school about two or three times a week sometimes. And... Uh, and write my own own letters to the to the teacher. Sometimes I would even phone and and pretend that 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 I'm I'm one of my parents, and um, and it was just maybe a, a thing of going through life and and trying to fit in. I was very hyperactive and and energetic as well. So when my initial group of close friends would be tired or or or, or sometimes go go home a little bit earlier in the evening. I would then stop by the older guys that were that were busy with the with the wrong things and do what they were doing and and uh, and and sort of a people's person so so any any sort of people and whatever they were doing I would just fall in and and do it with them um, yeah in the in the holidays of standard six um, by this time we were we were drinking just about every weekend and um, you know using any excuse to celebrate whatever we were we would bry and then not even eat the bry meat and uh and really just catch on nonsense and 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 sort of at that time in, enjoy what we were doing and uh yeah by by standard six in in that holiday so my 13th birthday i was exposed to 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 ecstasy MDMA, as as they as they call it now, at the at the at the trans parties where where people believe that uh, that people go for the music. That's bullshit. They go for the drugs. And um, yeah, once I experienced that, it it was a total change in 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 my life at at that time. You know, I, I went through a stage where in the in the sort of primary school years and leading up to the end of primary school and the beginning of standard six where where I listened to you know, I don't know if, if, if anybody realizes how influential music is. And um and I went through a stage where I was listening to a lot of at that time Biggie Smalls and, and NW and NWA and uh, and Tupac and all the sort of gangster rap at the time, Snoop Dogg, DMX, and um, and and what what we were doing is uh, sort of impersonating these people. You know, the same way that that today's young girls and 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 young boys sort of watch the TikTok videos that is is very sexually orientated, and then just without a clue they start. Um, start impersonating those people so i think i had a bit of an identity crisis as well where at the end of primary school i would be dressing like these 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 at that time gangster rappers and um and then and then obviously you know got into the dacha stage where 
where I was wearing luster colors, dacha leaf earrings. Um, and and you must know, if I'm listening to Tupac on a Friday night, it's the same as me watching Bruce Lee on a Sunday night. When I watch Bruce Lee on a Sunday night, or Jean-Claude Van Damme, then on Monday morning I was in the office for fighting at school because I thought I was that oak on the TV like. So the same thing used to happen when I, when I used to listen to Tupac or to some gangster rap or whatever. I would, I would think, that, um, think that I'm that oak and, and go make cuck, make trouble wherever I went. And um, yeah, so, so maybe a little bit of identity crisis where, where I then later on changed a little bit and, and, and I was like sort of on the Rasta and Bob Marley mode and um uh, peace and love and and all of that and uh and then obviously came the ecstasy and that 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 took me into a phase of of green hair on the one side and and pink hair on the other side and 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 long sleeve long sleeve vests and and platform shoes and 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 obviously the the trance music that goes along with it and um and through all this time it was drinking every weekend brying every weekend uh making shit wherever we went had to be the people that stuck out and um and yeah once i experienced the the ecstasy or MD, mdma um a whole different sort of set of eyes opened opened up for me you know still passing at school at the time still doing doing my sort of house chores and um and still sort of looking like i was progressing in life um obviously not listening to anybody just making sure that i pass at school um pulling all the right faces to to mom and dad and saying all the right things and uh things that seemed to be normal to me at the time stubborn not listening to anybody i always tell the people that i had a bit more of a listening problem than a drug problem and uh <coughs> yeah even even with uh okay cool like i see mr wall has arrived at his at his at his destination or at the at the hotel where where they're staying and uh hope you have a have a restful restful evening mr all we we know how busy you are on your mission you you just don't stop and uh and that's what keeps us spurring on to 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 spend long days and 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 uh and focus on on our own recovery and and help the guys here as well it's only a pleasure michelle And uh, so, by the standard six holidays, uh, we used to catch on all kinds of shit. Eh? So my friend's parents, they go away to a caravan park. And I don't know if anybody watching remembers the old Opel Cadet GTEs, the one before the Opel Superboss. It's a limited edition car today, a pretty fast one. And, uh, and we're busy drinking milk start. Uh, don't ask me why we're drinking milk start, okay? But anyways, there was about eight of us there. Um, but out of proportion because there was uh, six guys and two girls. But anyways, um, we were enjoying the school holidays. And so we all lack on a plug and we find the car keys and uh, we don't find the garage keys. So we obviously make a plan to get the garage open and we go for a couple of joy rides and whatever. <coughs> and and um yo that's sad derek and 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 that's how we that's how we lose people along the way uh, you know just just thinking of just thinking of those 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 eight people that were with me i think i think two of them is is still full blown in in addiction and um and there's a few of them that didn't go on that path but but the the initial people that 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 sort of went into the the harder more destructive addictive very addictive drugs um 
there's three of us that are out of the 12 that are that are still alive one stands at the at the robots and and the other one sells his sells his body to obviously carry on with 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 his addiction all the others have been been lost sadly lost along the way and 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 many many more other people and um that is what i'm grateful for this for this evening is that from 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 the start of my affiliation with with rail even in the times that i didn't want to listen um i wasn't ever given up on it's always been principles before personalities it's 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 always been whenever i didn't listen and <clears throat> and uh and the addiction and and the thinking way of addiction had gotten the better of me i was always welcomed back with 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 open arms because this time i i, I could have just gotten it right and um and yeah so so we went on a on a bit of a joy ride catching on nonsense thought it was funny to drive around in in uh in in what this guy's parents had kept in the garage as a prized possession and um <clears throat> full of milk start we conned ourselves into we conned ourselves into believing that we were going to the engine 24 hour shop to go and buy milk to have coffee because the beer was finished but that was bullshit we just wanted to ride around and, and catch on nonsense and uh yeah so that was on the 23rd of december i'll never forget that uh that sadly there was a there was an accident on the main road the next night where 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 one of the guys actually actually passed away and um and yes mom i've i've been to so many addicts funerals and like i said earlier you know listening to that guy speaking about his recovery story and his sponsor telling him that he's going to need a black suit if he's going to be in the in the circles of addiction and addiction recovery because he the sad part about it is that that it's jails institutions and death and if there's a parent out there this evening whose son or daughter or loved one mother father sister brother whatever the case might be is using and that hasn't happened if that person doesn't get the right treatment jails institutions and death is what is going to happen and um so yeah we we went on a joyride with eight people in the car i was sitting in the front on on my friend's lap five people in the back three in the front including the driver and then uh we we knocked three six foot walls out on a corner plot in Burezig. luckily i never went through the windscreen um i remember seeing my arm and my nose imprinted in the windscreen and um you know it's all these all these happenings and 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 naughtiness and rebellion and not listening that 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 got me into these situations and uh and possible even even experience if if you want to call it that um so yeah that that was that was one part of it so ah big joke nobody's injured anything like that the driver of the car who's it was his parents car he looked worse after his parents came home and blixened him than what he did after the accident but uh so anyways it was big big uh sort of i don't want to say publicity but we were in the limelight and and we we had to rebuild the person's wall we knocked three three six foot pillars out of the wall and the three six foot walls obviously lucky luckily by by god's grace that that nobody was was seriously injured and um and that was on the 23rd of december on the all fun jokes and games on the the 2nd of january a couple of days later this was uh this was in the in the six week holidays of of grade eight i we then obviously experimented with with something called malpita um <laughs> it's it's very closely associated to hallucinogenics and 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 moonflowers um 
there were stories at the time in the U magazine to, to, to people who had lost their lives from, from experimenting with this. And maybe today I can laugh a little bit about it, but at the time I don't think it was so funny, you know, to, to wake up in hospital, don't smoke for nine days because I forgot that I smoked cigarettes. I thought that I was in a hotel, but it was actually yo. Oh, some of it was some of it was really funny. Sometimes I thought I was in a hotel. Other times I thought I was in Tigerberg Zoo, because there were so many animals that I was seeing in the hospital that nobody else was seeing, and um, and also a very deep state of fear, seeing snakes and cats and and all kinds of shit in a surveillance room with a with a little window, with myself and 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 my friend. Um, five of us had had had, uh, had taken taken the the malpita that that sort of evening, and uh, within ten minutes, I I was I was just about blacked out. I started walking and and falling head first on the on the tar. And um, and yeah, made it. You know. My friends were used to me acting in a certain way when I was drunk and 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 carrying on and being loud and things like that. But but always when we were when we were geruk or stoned or catching on nonsense, we would get to my friend's house and he would tell me, "Shh, my mom's inside and whatever." And I'd pull myself right and be quiet. <clears throat> so for about two hundred meters, they walked a bit in front of me and I was falling on my knees and my face the whole time. And they thought that I'm just acting and carrying on the way I normally do, but I was busy overdosing actually. <coughs> And uh, we got to my first friend's house and, and, and dropped him off. And he said, Shh, my mom's inside. Don't carry on because his mom was quite um, quite strict when she wanted to be. And uh, they noticed that I wasn't joking when I fell over their coffee table onto their, onto their TV unit and, and pulled all the ornaments down and, and, and half the TV unit with me. And at about at that stage... Uh, our curfew was at 12 o'clock, so we were running a bit late already. <coughs> and, um, yeah, so three of us separated from, from the group of five. The the one tore his dad's house to pieces, broke all the cupboards because he thought there was things inside the cupboard. The other one was arrested because he was running around naked, um, urinating on people's letterboxes. And um, one of them sort of the the third one that 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 we dropped off he sort of didn't go too bad into the into the trip or into the hallucinating stage because he didn't drink the pits and uh obviously me you know the the smallest in the lot i want to see the most aliens we were told that just the sky would be purple and um and we'd see a couple of ufos and and it would be a jaw but it turned into a nightmare i almost died that night and uh, they realized that I wasn't joking. And, and the, the guy who we dropped off, he's, he's, he had a very big built brother that, that carried me all the way to, to my friend's house that we, that we were sleeping over at that night. And, um, you know, luckily his, his mom woke up when we came home and came to come and check the state of, of what we were, we, we were in. And myself and... I was totally blacked out. I remember nothing. Apparently, his mom found me on the floor, staring at my hands with my with my one leg on the on the bed. My lips were blue, and I couldn't speak. Um, she burst into tears when when she seen me. And um, my my friend wasn't wasn't completely overdosed the the way I was. He was he went to go and wake his dad up to go and tell him Funda Mava jokes. Luckily, he done that because then he's. His mom heard this this shit, and um, and decided to come and check where I am, and found me on the floor. Lips were blue, eyes rolling back in my head. I was trying to speak, and my mouth was too dry. I was just just making making noises, and um, you know, a uh, uh, a mom sort of intuition or feeling something strange about my mom that that evening. She couldn't sleep. And uh, yeah, I was, I was I was rushed to hospital, and I stayed there for a for a further seven days in a in a in a surveillance room. 
took me about three days to come out of my out of my blackout and then I started hallucinating badly. Mm-hmm. Really, really badly. The the doctors the, the family were surrounded by, surrounded around my bed to possibly say their goodbyes and things like that. Um yeah, it it was a complete state of insanity. And um, you know, even going through that, it, it didn't scare me away from from drugs. It did from hallucinogenics, but I still pursued and carried on to do just about every other drug, pharmaceutical or whatever else you could get high on, um, for the the next just about eighteen years. And um, <coughs> and you know some. Some of the group of friends stopped along the way, and and others didn't. Some lost their lives along the way, and um, and this still didn't didn't teach me and 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 cause me to stop. So surely, surely I had lost my choice, and 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 I was sick. And um, you know, at that stage, I, I wasn't stealing and doing bad things. My my excuse was that that. Uh, I would have casual jobs or I'd find ways and means to to sort of get the drugs and um and use them. I was passing at school. Um eventually, you know, it it, it got bad. The, there was there was a lot of button smoking, taking ecstasy, eventually exposed to crack, using a lot of crack and um and then eventually landing up on, on heroin. And that was a that was a a thirteen year nightmare that you know i I always try and sit here and explain to the oh wait let me let me tell you how our demo car was in the in the surveillance room in the hospital so so there's two beds next to each other behind that there's a little surveillance window cheers uncle Chris sleep well there's a little surveillance window. And then um, there's obviously big, thick, like burglar bars and whatnot. There's a door that, that can only be opened by the nurses and things like that. And uh, and there's a there's a there's a bathroom cubicle in there that has a door. So you come in there. There's a shower over here. You turn around. There's a toilet over there. And I don't know if 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 um, if if you do still get them, but you used to get the lights where you where you pull the string. And then it's tick-tick and the light comes on. So I'm so confused I can hardly walk. First of all, I woke up in the hospital with a nappy on, staring at my hands like this. My knees were the size of uh, of those little soccer balls because of falling on my knees. My, my head was all grazed and, and swollen from falling on my face the whole time. And um, so I go into this bathroom. And now I'm thinking, but from the bed to the bathroom, I think to myself, shit, why am I here in the bathroom? Like, So I go out again, and I remember, I get back to the bed, I remember, oh yes, yes, man, I want to do wee. Okay? So I go back there, I close the door, I check, hey, but it's darkness here, so I, so I, pull, the, I pull the light. I obviously don't notice that there's, uh, that there's a little red light going on at the top. I pull the light, I check, no, it's still darkness, man. So the nurse comes into the room, and I don't even know it's a nurse. I ask him, I'm like, you know, a towel with 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 uh, with a lady with a nurse outfit on, and uh, and anyway, she asks me like like she comes into the bathroom, are you okay here and whatnot? I'm like, fine, thanks yourself, because I don't realize that I'm in hospital. And um, anyway, she leaves. I turn around. I remember. Oh yes, I want to do wee. I pull the string again. She comes back again. She asks me, yes, or are you like fine? This happens for about eight times. And now I'm really confused because she eventually comes there and asks me, why am I calling her the whole time? And I think it took me about three days to realize that each time I was pulling the string, I was calling the nurse. And um, and the light wasn't coming on. And yeah, oh, geez, 
I, I, I tell you, it's 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 laughable now, but um, but obviously at the time, you know, I was I was, I was uh, still after three or four days, I was I was, I was being I was walking um, over people's over people's sort of shoulders to to help me up once I could start walking again, and and even then the the floor of the of the passage of the hospital would change to a gravel road and tumbleweed would would come rolling down the road towards me and there'd be snakes and I, I, I like try and hit the tumbleweed look at my hand and it's full of thorns and and um, maybe today I realized that it's that it was all the evil that um, that my eyes were opening up to or opened up to because you possibly go into different realms that you that you shouldn't once you're sort of on drugs and um so things progressed and life got better and and uh the drinking and smoking all different kinds of drugs and 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 taking pharmaceuticals and things became almost normal and uh i studied to be a chef i i i got my matric i got my tertiary education and the drugs and the parting and the especially in the hospitality industry working long hours taking more drugs to carry on and 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 i couldn't see the destructive part in it i couldn't see that i was becoming numb and selfish and self-centered and that god forbid anything stand in the way between me and my drink or drugs i got into a relationship had had my firstborn jordan who's now who's turning 16 on on christmas day Jeez, I'm a, I must tell you, when he was born on Christmas Day, I was convinced that I was God. <laughs> there was no doubt in my mind at that time that I was God. And I honestly, one day when I was Dick Geruk, thought to myself, I wonder if I'm God. Obviously now I know that I'm not God, you know what I mean? But uh, at that time my thoughts were a little bit different obviously drug induced and whatnot and um and outwardly life seemed to be going okay uh uh, uh i was progressing had a good job and um obviously started heroin and um the first two years of heroin made a lot of debt um i would i would you know i i stole just about everything that 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 could could be sold in my parents' house, caused a lot of shit. Um, one evening, one evening many years ago, I was sitting at my at my parents' house. They had they had just sort of bought a, or were building on a plot at at a holiday resort. And um, this is why, while um, while my firstborn's mom was pregnant with him, and I was having a jaw in my mom's house, and. Uh, so I was I was sitting there and 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 on the on the lunch table. This is how disrespectful and self-centered I was, and didn't give a shit about anything. Is um, I was sitting there with a with a parcel, a newspaper full of dacha on the table, and um, another guy, who's who's not with us anymore today, who who who, who never took the opportunity or got given the opportunity to. To be granted with a with a with a gift of desperation and 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 the program that that has gotten me to this point, um, you know. So it, so it might sound like war stories. It might sound like like at the time was fun, but uh, yeah, sitting sitting in my parents' lounge with with a parcel of 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 dacha on the on the kitchen table. On the lounge table, sorry, with um, with mandrax crushed in 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 about four or five mandrax pills crushed in a in a in a paper next to it, smoking a bottleneck in the lounge. That is how disgraceful and disgusting my behaviour was, with um, with my my pregnant girlfriend at the time, who's Jordan's mother. Um, sort of knocking on the door i locked her out because she was irritating she was ringing the bell so eventually for for her to stop irritating me i took the batteries out of the bell 
But by that time, I didn't know that the cops were busy ringing the doorbell. And that they were already in the yard watching me through the window smoking illegal substances in my mother's house. Um, yeah, so obviously living in a complex at that time, it drew a lot of attention. There was three different police stations there, two different armed responses, the dog unit and half the pub from next door came into the complex. The cops broke the door down. I obviously managed to get rid of the drugs quick enough. And um, the house was full of full of smoke. And the dogs didn't find anything, and and I eventually ended up getting arrested, abused a little bit by the police as well, and um, and my parents' house were was 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 left open, and. Um, yeah, that's just a just a sort of picture of of how disrespectful and and selfish I was, and um, you know at 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 that stage I, I couldn't see my wrong part in anything to do with the jaw, alcohol, drugs, anything I was doing, and whatever stood in my way of getting high or drunk, I would walk through. And that is the attitude that I've taken on today with my with my recovery. You know, obviously progressing into 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 tick and heroin crack and um you know, all the, the pharmaceuticals I was I was I was on I was addicted to, to diazepam um and and Xanax and and methadone, which is a nice name for morphine where Doctors prescribe it now today as if as if it's cough mixture that that you're getting but it's but it's actually a more addictive substance than than heroin it's pharmaceutical heroin that uh, I ended up getting addicted to that 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 made my life and everybody's life around me a hundred times worse um, I sold everything I owned and a lot of everybody else's things uh I went to prison, I got myself into a situation where the very people that I was disrespecting and treating badly would have to come and visit me in prison. You know, it's not a nice thing to think about today when, when you know that, that, that through your own actions your your mom had to walk through through prison doors and and get searched and wait in long lines to to come and see her son in prison it's embarrassing it's disgraceful the way i went on with you know my mom worked around the corner from 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 not my home their home at the time where i was allowed to sleep not in the house which i don't blame them because all the shit i, I caused there all the the disrespect, all this stuff I stole, and how disgusting I became. That the the woman that I'm marrying now, I was I stole all her stuff. Even down to her kids' clothes, and her clothes. Things that I've been blessed with the opportunity of making right with, so that I can live spiritually clean with with without going to bed with guilt in my heart without going to bed with shame given the opportunity to make right because that's what we taught you is instead where instead of where i can take where i can give and that's the journey that mr hall's on at the moment and that's the journey that we're on here at rail where can i contribute to to life Instead of drain and suck the life out of everything around me. Because thank God that I've got a life. Thank God for this program of life. And thank God that, I, that I'm sitting here alive to be able to share my story. Or part of my story. It goes a lot deeper and darker than that. Much deeper and darker. But I've been blessed with the opportunity to be able to help a family... Or, or a person that 
is possibly thinking about doing these things that are that I've done that I've that I've told you about. I still make many mistakes, and uh, I still smoke lots of cigarettes and drink lots of coke. But my life has seemed to become rather manageable. I've been grown and developed in a way that I can make um, make decisions in the in the best interest of of myself and my fellows around me. I believe that uh, I was saved by grace to carry a message that people that haven't gone this far down the scale as what I needed to go. Because three weeks, two weeks, a week before I came here, I was sleeping in the yard of the lady that I'm getting married to on the 28th of November, either in the yard, outside next to the car, or th on the side of the walkway next to my mother's house. Imprisoned, enslaved, and confused, scared, isolated, lonely, and a victim of my own wrong choices and decisions that led me to become a very, very ill person. And, um, you know, today I'm, 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 I'm blessed and graced with, with, with a new freedom and a and a different path that I'm that I'm able to walk, where all the different ugly names that you can get, I was called, and people had reason to call me that. Where those very people are now asking me for for advice or guidance, and um, where I can walk in my in my own community and. And acknowledge and, and and admit my mistakes that I've done something about. So um, that isn't the long and short of it. There's a very, very dirty, hard and destructive and disgraceful part that I didn't get to. But... Um, And by God's grace, I sit here on a Saturday evening and I feel free. Free and blessed and, and very, very grateful. You know, this, this weather always reminds me of, of where I could have been. And as I open the meeting, let's, let's think about the, the person that's going to their first recovery meeting this evening that's going to their their last recovery meeting this evening and um, and the rest of the people that are that are in recovery and and doing this this program of action every day living practically by the principles that are that are taught over here so thank you mr all for 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 everything that you that you do and and have done and um and for the message that you carry the message of hope that we we hope people pass on and um definitely a much better saturday evening than any Saturday dragging tank. <laughs> tank went on a date last night. And uh, very blessed people. So um, let's be mindful of the others, of other people. And uh, as I said, instead of taking, see where we can give and contribute to life. Thank you very much. God bless you.